Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Good morning and welcome to our Karis Daily Live Bible Study. My name is Claire and I'm on staff at Karis and uh, it's an honor to be sharing this day with you and of course with Rick. Um, you guys are in for a treat this morning. So for those of you who aren't familiar how the show works, I'm going to take a couple of minutes to go through some announcements. Then I'm going to hand you over for an amazing teaching this morning. So um, we are live five days a week. So Monday and Friday is 10 a.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays is 6 p.m. and then Wednesdays bright and early at 7 a.m. in the morning. So hopefully you can catch us live multiple times a week. Just do the calculation for the time zones and, uh, and join us because if you are able to join us live during these live Bible studies, you can ask questions. So the last 10 to 15 minutes of this show, uh, we're going to answer as many questions as we can. So while Pastor Rick is teaching this morning, if he says something that triggers a question or you get a question on your heart about something on the, um, on the teaching, go ahead and submit it. And you can do that by uh, putting it in the chat section on whatever platform you're watching on. And the questions will come through to us and we'll get to as many as we can at the end of the segment. So um, you guys always ask great questions. So uh, go ahead and submit them because we love to hear from you. And uh, if you need prayer for anything, we have such an amazing prayer team uh, standing by. They're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So please don't be alone. If you're going through anything and you just need someone to reach out to, go ahead and give our prayer ministers a call. The number is 719-635-1111. And just talk to them. They'll pray with you. We even have over 200,000 hours of resources um, on all different topics of life. And they'll, they'd love to bless you with something. So have a chat with them. And um, yeah, hopefully they can help you through. If you're going through something tough, I'm sure they'll be able to help <coughs> you through it. So um while you're on the phone with them, if you'd like to donate to this ministry, uh, you can go ahead and do that. And um, if you do donate, I just want to say thank you so much because obviously these shows that we put on, plus other things that the ministry does, it's all free of charge, but it does cost money to do it. So if you do donate or if you do partner with this ministry, a huge thank you to you because you're the reason we're able to do things like this and you bless so many other people. So um, uh, the, don uh, the number to donate, uh, if you like it again, it's 719-635-1111. Or you can go online at awmi.net forward slash give. And um, it's a pretty simple process. So uh, thank you for that. But um, today I am with Rick McFarland. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? I'm incredible and getting better. Amen to that. That's awesome. What, what, um, a lot of what our students are saying now is better than ever. That's, that's one of the churches that they go to. That's their thing now. We are better than ever. So okay. it's kind of catching on. All right. So, uh, yeah. So uh, what are you teaching today? All right. Well, we always, uh, I enjoy being with you guys. It's always a good time. So today we're going to talk about something that doesn't seem like it's a fun topic, but when we understand it correctly, I think it's going to be a real big blessing to us. So I'm going to talk about the testing of our faith. Mm. And so all of us are going to be tested in the area of our faith. And so let's pop right into the Word of God. And there's a couple of verses that show us about our faith being tested. Look at James chapter 1. Look at verse 3. James 1, 3 says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So this verse talks about your faith is going to be tested. Now in 1 Peter chapter 1, look at verse 7, here's another verse that tells us our faith is going to be tested. That the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So we just have a couple of verses that prove to us and show us that our faith is going to be tested. And so we can't get out of that. And so as a Christian, your, your faith is going to be tested. So we're going to talk about why are, we have, why are we tested. And so the word test, the word trial, and the word tempt is all the same Greek word that we come from. And so 
why are we tempted? Why are we tested? Why are we tried? And so we're going to find out the answer from the Bible. But, you know, religion always gets it backwards, gets it wrong. Yeah. And so religion tells us the reason why you have trials in life or tests in life is because you're in a big classroom. And so life's a big classroom. And so trials and tests are sent to you to teach you things. Right. And so either religion will say, well, God's yeah. going to send trials to you to mm -hmm. test you to, so that you can be taught certain lessons. Or uh, God allows them. And so religion always gets things wrong. And so you have to go to the Word of God. And so why, does, why, do, why are we tested? Why are we tried? Not because we're in a classroom. The reason why there's tests in life is because we're on a battlefield. And that's because when you got saved, you didn't get a private rapture. And so the whole goal of salvation isn't just to take you to heaven. It's that you're going to be left here as a witness, as a testimony with a great commission to go out and into a dark world, into Satan's territory and take captives out of darkness and bring them into the kingdom of light. And so you're on assignment. And so you're going to be sent out on a battlefield and that's why you're going to get attacked. And so that's why tests and trials come. So what is our classroom? Well, this right here can, can be our classroom yeah. where we're learning the Word of God, learning what belongs to us, learning what we're equipped with, learning about our assignment, church services. That's what where we're supposed to learn our personal time with God in our own time with the Bible and prayer. That's the time we're in a classroom where God's <laughs> teaching us. But as soon as you walk out the door, that's your mission field. And so at our church, we have a sign uh, leaving the church in our lobby. It says, you're now entering the mission field. That's awesome. And so yeah. we go out. So you're equipped in church to go out into the mission field. And so there's going to be different trials. And so I'm going to talk about there's two types of tests, two types of trials. And they're from two sources, two different sources. And so first of all, I'm going to look at the first one. And this one is always from the enemy, our enemy, Satan. And so the first one, I'm going to give you a Greek word. You might want to write this down if you're taking notes. It's the Greek word parazo. Now it sounds Italian, but it's not. It's a Greek word, parazo, P-E-I-R-A-Z-O, parazo. This means to try whether a thing can be done or not, to attempt whether it can be done. And it's also a test in order to cause something to fail or to break. Okay. And so an engineer will try to do this with a, with a, a metal piece of, of, of rod that you're going to build with or a steam, I mean a, a metal beam, and they're going to put it through pressure tests right. to try to find the breaking point. Yeah. And so that's the enemy's tr test. He's going to try to break you. He's going to try to get you to fail, get, to discredit you, and he's going to try to see what he can get away with. He's going to see if it can be done. And he's a thief. Mm. You know, John 10.10 10 says that the enemy is a thief and he's going to come steal, kill, and destroy. So the enemy, first of all, he's going to try to steal. And so he is going to come into a Christian life and try to take something of small value to see if you'll take your authority right. and see if you'll stand against him. And, but if you don't, he gets away with it. He's going to come back and keep taking things. And so he's going to take bigger and bigger things. And oftentimes Christians don't stand against the enemy until it gets pretty serious. Right. Until he's taking the refrigerator that's, out the door. That's so true. Yeah. yeah. We're too laid back with stuff like that. Or he's trying yeah. to take the TV out. And you're like, right. okay, no, 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 hang on. <laughs> or the refrigerator. No, you're not going to take that out. <laughs> and so, no, we need to, we need to take our authority. He's a thief trying to go in where he doesn't have authority. And so that's the time of trouble. He's going to try to, to try something to get a, to, to get, see if he can get away with it. But he's also going to try to break you and try to cause you to fail or to sin. So God never sends those tests. They're mm. never from God. And so uh, let, the second type of test is the different Greek word totally from a different source. It's the Greek word dokimazo, D-O-K-I-M-A-Z-O, D-O-K-I-M-A-Z-O. AZO. It's a totally different type of test. This test is to test the quality of something to determine its genuineness. And so you can use it in a greater way. Mm, that's this good. was a, like a, a test that a refiner of gold. And so they're going to put something that looks like gold. And so is it fool's gold? Is it real gold? So I'm going to put it to the test and put it in the fire. And we're going to see. And if it comes out as true gold, you proved it's genuine. But the whole purpose of it is you want to use it in a greater way. Right. And so what do you do? You fashion a wedding ring out of that gold. It's much more precious and valuable. And so you can take it through that test. And so I have a question for you. Does God test us? Does He put us through trials? Well, it depends on which one. Mm. 
Because God, if you're going to talk about parazo, that first type, no, God never, ever tests us to break us, never tries to, to uh, find our negative side of our life. And so let's, let's uh, look at James chapter 1, look at verse 13. We're going to say that God never tests us with this first type of testing. James 1, look at verse 13. Let no one say when he's tempted that I'm tempted parazo that by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt parazo mm. anyone. God's never going to try to get you to fail, get you into sin, try to do, do something negative or to break you. That's not God. And so he doesn't do that. But God does test us with the second type. Right. Daki Monzo. So let's look at some, I, have, I could give you verse after verse, but for time's sake, I'm going to give you one in the New Testament that shows this, and then we move on. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, look at verse 4. 1 Thessalonians 2, 4, it says, But as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, even so we speak, not pleasing men, but God who tests our hearts. Right there it says God tests our hearts. But it's not parazo, it's dokimazo. So what's that mean? How does God test us with blessings? He'll give us opportunities, He'll mm. give us blessings to see what are you going to do with it. Right. And if we're going to use it well and use it right and we're faithful with the little that He gives us, then He can bless us and trust us and promote us so He can give us greater. And so that's uh, really the parable of the talents in Matthew 24 verse 14 through 29, we don't have time to go there. But in this parable, the, the, the master gives three servants talents. One got five, one got two, one got one. And the five went out and did something with it. And when they came back, they had, they had ten. And then the other had two. He did something with it and got four. But the one who had one hit it, didn't do anything with it, didn't gain anything. And the master comes back and holds them accountable. What did you do with right. this test? With what I, the blessings I gave you, what did yeah. you do? Well, one says, you know what? I went out and used it and I gained, you know, I doubled, doubled it. There's yeah. a 10. He says, well done, a good and faithful servant. And so the second one says, hey, I used what you had and I doubled it. He says, well, good, well done, a good and faithful servant. But one says, you know what? Here's one and it's back, you can have it back. And so he wasn't pleased with that mm. because he didn't do, he wasn't faithful with the one he got. And so that's really how it is that, in Matthew 25, 29, we'll, we'll look at this last verse. This is the end of this parable. Matthew 25, 29, for everyone who has, more will be given, and he who has, and he'll have an abundance. You know, the one that got the 10 actually got the additional one from the one that didn't do anything. It's give the one to the one who had 10. Yeah. And so he had 11. And so he'll have an abundance from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And so this is the kind of test that we are going to go through. But God tests us to approve us and to promote us always. Mm -hmm. That's so good. And so um, let's look at a... Um, Let's look at the, a couple of verses that talk about this. So, because sometimes these two tests are going to come together. The enemy is going to come and do a parazo on you. He's going to try to break you. He's going to try to, to get you to fail. And so the enemy, and it's from the enemy, he's going to come to you. But God's going to say, okay, well, you want to do this? Well, I'm going to turn this around mm. and use it against the enemy. And he's going to dokimazo. And you say, okay, you're going to come against my child? Okay, well, I've already given them my faith, I give them my armor, I give them my word, I give them my promises, and all that's genuine. Mm. And so when the fire hits, it's not really testing you, it's going to test God's word. It's going to test the faith He's given you. And so it's all from God, and it's going to come through. Nope, that's the genuine article. And so guess what? When you come through the fire successfully, God's going to promote you in a greater way than you would have never been promoted before. Awesome. And so God is a master judo master. What's, a, what's judo? <laughs> judo is a form of martial arts where you use the momentum of your enemy against them. That's what judo is. Right. And so when, when an enemy comes at you, you just use the momentum and throw them into the ground. Well, the, God is a, is a master judo uh, master. So what he's going to use the enemy and he's going to put them in the ground. And so we're going to see these two types of trials working together. Look in James chapter 1 again. Look at verse 2 and then we'll look at verse 3. James 1, 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. This is the Greek, this is the actu actual noun of that word, parazo. It's parasmas. That's the noun. The other one was a verb. And so this is from the devil. And so he's going to give you various trials to break you. But look at verse 3. Knowing that the testing, dokimion, 
It's the, it's the noun of dokimazo. And so the enemy is going to come at you to try to break you. And God says, okay, you're going to do that. I'm going to use this and turn this around as a judo master. And I'm actually going to prove that what I've given them, their faith is genuine for me. And I'm going to promote them on the other side. That's awesome. Greater than yeah. if they ever would have not gone through it. And they use it against the devil. And so look at 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to see this again. 1 Peter 1.6. It says, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Again, this is the, the noun parasmos, a parazo. So various trials. Look at verse 7, that the genuineness of your faith. So again, this type of trial, dokimazo, is where, uh, it, where the genuineness of something is proven. That the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it's tested, dokimazo, mm. by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. You know what? When the devil starts messing, God starts blessing. Huh. I love that. And he's going to promote you, promote you, promote you. But it's the yeah. faith you use in the trial. It's not just going through a trial that's going to cause you to be promoted. Right. It's actually the faith you use in the midst of the trial. And your faith is from God. Your faith yes. is genuine. It will carry you through. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And so again, the devil is going to, our faith is going to be tested, but we're going to come out shining. And so I want to look now at some examples of faith being tested in the Bible. There's certain tests of our faith. And so there's the Bible characters, but you're going to go through at some point in your life, you're going to have this kind of test or you're, you're probably, you might be in one of these tests. And so let's first look at the type, one type of test of our faith. It's the time test. It's mm -hmm. what's called a time trial. And so time test, what does that mean? Well, God gives you a promise. And from the time he gives you a promise until it's fulfilled, there's a time. Right. There's seed time. That's, that's the promise. And then there's a harvest. Seed, time, yep. harvest. There's always a time between the planting of the seed and the harvest. And that's called time. And so that's where the test comes from is what are you going to do when there's time in between God's promise and then you're seeing the fulfillment of it. And so there were some in the Bible that had the time test and they came out successfully. And so look at Joseph, Joseph. And so Joseph was promised as a 13 or I mean, as a 17 year old that he would rule over his brothers and that they would come down and bow down to him. Even his father would bow down to him at 17. He told his dreams to his brothers and they got angry and sold him off into right. slavery. It didn't look like this is going to work at all. All of a sudden I'm a slave. Yeah. And so God's there. And so for, from 17 years old to 30, he's in Egypt and most of it's in prison. Yep. You think this is never going to happen. And so he has a time lapse of 13 years between the promise and the fulfillment. And so what happened between that time? Look at Psalms 105, look at verse 19. Psalms 105, verse 19, speaking of Joseph. Until the time that God's word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested Joseph, tested him. And so are you going to be faithful? And Joseph was faithful. He didn't let anything get, get him down. Sure. You know, he, 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 he trusted God when he was in Potiphar's house and God promoted him. You know, the devil tried to break him. His brothers sold and betrayed him. And, and so that was a dip from the devil. But God, but he trusted God and God turned that around and promoted him. And he was blessing and Potiphar's place was blessed. But then the devil hit again with yep. a parasmo, with a parazo. And, and, and got lied about by, by Potiphar's wife, and he ends up in prison. But you know, he keeps, I'm going to keep trusting my God. And before long, God promoted him. He was the top of the prison, and so he was like a beach ball. You ever been in a pool where you have a beach ball, and you try to swim all the way down with the beach ball and let go of it? It pops yep. up. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you something out there. You're about to come up, beach ball. <laughs> That's awesome. The devil's come to put you down, to break you, but keep trusting God because you're going to come up. God's going to promote you. He's going to, the devil's going to parazo, but God's going to dock him mazo. He's going to do a judo master. It's one of the few times you can call someone a beach ball and it's a compliment. To Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's not your figure. That's, you know, it happened with Abraham. You know, God gave him a promise at 75 year old, you're going to have a mm. child. But it's been years down the road that he's, that this hasn't happened yet. And so this promise was not only to Abram, but also to, to Sarah. And so look at Genesis 16, look at verse one. 
Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go into my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain ch children by her. And so it's like, you know, this time has gone by and, you know, and it doesn't seem to happen the way God said. So we need to help God out. Yeah. Have you ever tried to help God out? Uh -huh. It don't work very well. Yep. And so what happened? And so, so uh, Sarah gave the maidservant Hagar. Where did he get Hagar? In Egypt. When he didn't trust God in the promise and went down to Egypt. So he ended up with a Hagar. And so look, it says, get, I'll get, go into my maid. Perhaps I'll obtain children by her. And Abraham heeded the voice of Sarah. He goes, that's a great idea. Jerk. <laughs> so, he ends up, he says, he's, so he lays with, with her and actually has a child called Ishmael. Mm -hmm. You know, an Ishmael is a product of your own flesh. But one thing with an Ishmael is if you produced it, you have to take care of it. Right. If God produces it, he takes care of it. And so oftentimes in that yep. time trial or that time test, we give up before the manifestation and then we try to help God out and we end up with an Ishmael or an Ishmaelady. Yeah, that's so true. And so again, true. don't end up with an Ishmael or an Ishmaelady. And so keep God off your time clock. What does that mean? Well, you know, uh, I've given God a certain time for him to come through. And if he doesn't come through, then I'm going to take care of myself. No, keep God off your time clock. Now we receive by faith like healing and we have it now, but the manifestation may not be right when you say, I believe I receive. But that manifests, so keep your eyes off the time clock, off the clock, and God's going to be faithful. He's going to bring it through. The next one that had a time test was Noah. Noah. Look in Genesis 6, look at verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for indeed he is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. What is he saying here? He's not really saying about a time man's going to live from now on. Really says, I'm going to give mankind 120 years and then I'm sending the flood. So they have 120 years to repent. I'm not going to strive with them forever, give them 120 years. So what happened in 120 years is Noah is actually building a boat. 120 years. It's just him and his three sons. And so he's building this boat. And so people would say, well, Noah, what are you doing? Well, I'm building a boat. Why are you building a boat so far inland? Because it's going to rain. They say, what's rain? Yeah, because they'd never. Water's going to fall yeah. out of the sky. Yeah, right. And so year after year, he's building this boat. And I guarantee you, it's like a, it was a yearly event to go see the boat. You know, there's a, a ark encounter in Kentucky. I've gone and it has a full size it. boat. Yeah. And so people want to go see something like that. And so every year they would come and laugh at Noah. But Noah would get on the, get on the, the stern of the ship and mm -hmm. wait till the crowd got big enough and preach the gospel to him. And so, as a matter of fact, 2 Peter 2 5 says, and, the, and uh, God didn't spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness. He mm -hmm. preached for 120 years. But I want to tell you something. He preached 120 years with no converts. After 120 years, right. all he had was his own family. And then we want to give up because we're not seeing the fruit when we want to see it. Have you got 120 years and seen no fruit? Mm -hmm. And he wasn't even born again. And so hang on, there's fruit coming, there's a purpose for what you're doing. And so that's Noah. So that's the time trial, the time test. The next type of test is faithfulness test. A faithfulness test. Will you stay faithful when it doesn't look like it pays off to do so? And that's Daniel. And so Daniel was mm -hmm. being promoted and people got jealous of him and went to the king and said, hey, king, why don't you make a decree that anybody that bows down to pray to any other God, that they're going to be thrown to the lions? Because they knew Daniel was a prayer. And so uh, the king passed that rule. And then when Daniel found out, look in Daniel 6, look at verse 10, when he found out about that. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows closed and the curtains drawn. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a, that's a clueless translation. It actually <laughs> says... He went to his upper room with his windows open, mm -hmm. curtains open, windows open. He knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as his custom was in the early days. He didn't hide himself. He didn't say, you know what, I'm going to still be a witness. I'm still going to be faithful to God, even if it looks like it's going to count, cost me my life. And look down in verse 23, Daniel 6, 23. 
Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury whatever was found on him because he believed in his God. If you'll believe in your God, there will be no injury to you. And so it looks like in the natural there might be an injury to you, but you trust in your God. God's going to bring you through and he'll shut the mouths of lions for you. So next uh, test, and so that's the time trial, the faithfulness test. But now here's the uh, peer pressure test, pressure from people. And so that's a test of our faith. And so let's look at one, two that had this, one failed and one succeeded. Look at Saul, the first king of Israel, Saul. And so look at 1 Samuel 15, verse 13. He's going to give an, he's going to get assignment from Samuel to go destroy the Amalekites. And so he comes back after that. Look at 1, 1 Samuel 15, look at verse 13. Then Samuel went to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed are you, Lord, uh, of, uh, blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Then Samuel said, Well, then what is this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? Because he was supposed to go destroy all of the people, all the animals, bring nothing back. Well, he brings back a lot of livestock right. and the king of the Amalekites. So he says, What is this bleeding of the ears, and bleeding of the sheep I'm hearing in my ears and the lowing of oxen? And Saul said to Samuel, But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and I have gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me, and I brought back Agag, king of the Amalekites, and I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. And then this is what Samuel said in verse 23, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is the iniquity of idolatry, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, He has rejected you for being king. Look at the next verse, verse 24, Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. For I've transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words. Why? Look at the next phrase. Because I feared the people. I feared the people and obeyed their voice. The people said, no, save all the flock. Save Agag. We want to bring back treasure. We, want to, we don't want to destroy those. We can use that livestock. And he knew that that was the right thing to but peer pressure. Mm. And he bowed down. It cost him a kingdom. And so what peer pressure is coming against you? Maybe it was at work, maybe it's family, and you know what God's will is. You know what you're supposed to be doing, and people are trying to talk you out of it, try to pressure you, and everyone, no one else believes what you believe. But you know what, are you going to stay in that pressure? Because guess what? The enemy wants to, to totally uh, cause you to stop and stop doing what God wants you to do. Mm. And so here's, here's Nehemiah, though. Nehemiah is successful. He's building the walls of Jerusalem. Nehemiah 6, look at verse 1. Nehemiah 6, 1. When you start building something for God, there's gonna, the enemy's going to try to stop you. Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of the enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there were no breaks left in it, though at this time I had not hung the, the doors of the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent to me saying, Come, let us meet together among the villages of the plain of Ono. And they thought to do me harm. So I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work. So I cannot come down. Why should I work? Why should the work cease while I leave it to go down to you? But they sent to me this message four times, and I answered them the same time. They, so the enemies came and said, "Why don't you come down to us? Come down, stop. And we we want to talk you, but really want to talk him out of what right. he was doing." And so what did he say? He says, "Why should I come down and stop a great work to go talk to you? I'm not going to bow to you, but." The enemies wanted him to meet somewhere. Where did the enemies want him to meet? In a plain of oh no. Let me tell you something. When your enemy wants to bring you to a place called oh no. Like, oh no. <laughs> to try to talk with you. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Don't do it. And so the enemy wants to get you distracted, get you pressured yeah. and get to a place called oh no. Oh no. You don't need to be there. Don't allow the enemy to pressure you. Young lady, that, that, that you're dating someone that's trying to pressure you into bed, and you're not married. He's trying to get you to a place called, oh, no. Mm. Don't go to, oh, no. And uh, so next is a, a loyalty test. And so Ruth is put through a loyalty test. And so her husband's died, and, and so uh, Naomi says, go back home. And Ruth says, no, I'm going to follow you. And it says, where you die, I'll die. Where you're buried, I'll be buried. And, uh, and so to follow Naomi, it was almost kissing marriage goodbye. 
because she was a Moabitess. She was cursed in Israel. So to follow her back into Israel, she was basically saying no to marriage, but she said, I'm going to, I'm going to be loyal. Mm. I'm going to stay loyal. And guess what? God blessed her with a Boaz, a rich man, yep. a blessed man. Yep. And so that's a loyalty test. And then lastly is a self test. Moses going through that, Gideon went that, when God called Moses he says, no, I can't do it. I can't speak. I'm slow with speech. God picks someone else and God says, oh, no, I know who I'm calling and I know who it was who I had when I'm called you and I can use you and it's my power anyway. I, g I gave your mouth, I'll be with you. And so Moses was that way. Gideon was the same way. An angel showed up one day and said, hi, uh, said, oh, uh, the Lord is with you, oh mighty man of valor. And he looked around. Yeah. Me? Yeah. Right. He says, no, I'm the least in my tribe. I'm the least in Israel. Yeah. And so the test is, the test you need to overcome is stop looking at yourself. God's calling some of you to do some mighty things for him and you're looking at yourself. You know, I failed in the past or I don't have this. I don't have the resources. I don't have the talents. Well, that's why he picked you so that when he uses you, he gets the glory for it. Amen. And so we'll just wrap this up. And so the bottom line, what's some key thoughts? The devil sends trials to see what he can get away with and to break you. But God turns those around and proves the genuineness of the faith he's given you. And he's going to promote you on the other side. He's going to judo the enemy. The test is really not about you. It's about the truth of God's word and the faith he's given you. And tests don't come to teach us, but we're tested because we're on a battlefield. And we all have different tests of our faith. There's the time test, the faithfulness test, the peer pressure tests. And so today the Lord wants to promote you today. And I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you for those that are listening. And Father, I thank you. The enemies come at them and attack them. But Lord, you've given them everything they need to be successful. Mm. You've given them your word, your promises, your spirit, your armor, your faith. And Lord, that when they're being tested, everything you gave them is what's being tested and it's going to be proven genuine from you, the genuine article. But Lord, on the other side, you're going to turn this around, judo the enemy today, Lord. And I thank you that you're going to promote your children. You're going to promote that person that's listening right now. The enemy's come out to destroy you, but the God's going to turn it around and promote you. And Father, I thank mm -hmm. you for turning it around. I thank you for judoing the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. And he's doing a face plant into the dust. Uh -huh. And Father, I thank you, Father, for this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 That was awesome. Really, really good. You know, one thing when you were talking about the pressure test, Andrew Womack came to my mind because last year, when was it? Through whole COVID, he stood on what he knew was yeah, right. You're going to go to jail despite, if you continue yeah, to do that. Despite yeah. the immense pressure, and he was successful because you know, he knew. He got shut the, the lion's yeah. mouth, didn't he? Yeah, man. Yeah. So uh, it's awesome to work for a man like him. Amen. So, uh, okay, we've had some really good questions come in. Um, so I'm going to start down here. Um, I'm not sure if it's Yaku or Jaco. South Africa, I would say Yaku. So either way, I apologize if I'm butchering it. But um, he, on YouTube, he says, what is the best way to stop or fight off and overcome enemies tests? Well, the Bible tells us that we need to resist him in faith. That's 1 mm -hmm. Peter 5, 7, I believe it says, resist him in faith. And so, um, and so that's uh, 1 Peter 5, 7. And so you just need to stand on the word of God. Put your faith in God's promises. And when he comes, you stand, withstand him and he must flee from you. Mm. That's the book of James chapter four, verse seven. And so you resist him in faith and he will flee from you. That's awesome. Is you, you wrote a book on James. Uh, commentary, yeah. Commentary, yeah. it's really good. Yeah, I haven't read all of it, but the, when the pieces that I've gone through, my goodness, you go through line by line. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Janie on Facebook asks, if we are already healed, why do we have to wait? Well, it's already healed in the spirit. And so we, we, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. That's, that's Mark 11, 20, or Mark 11, 24. Whatever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them. And so we can only receive what God's already provided. He's provided <laughs> healing by his stripes. You were healed, but that's in the spirit. That's in, uh, in Christ. And so that's in the spirit realm. So how do we receive what's in the spirit realm into the natural? It's by faith. 
Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so faith harvests what's true in the spirit and brings it into the natural. And so from the time you say, I have it, mm. although you don't see it until there it is, there's a time lapse of manifestation. And so, but don't be waiting for your manifestation by keeping your eyes on the natural to see if God's word so. Keep your eyes on the truth. And let God take care of the time. And usually if we're focusing, you say, well, I believe the word of God. And then I'm looking for my manifestation. You're looking to the natural to see if God's word's true. The more you look at the natural, you're actually ministering unbelief to yourself. Right. And you're counteracting your faith. And so the more you're focusing on the natural to see if God's word's so, you're actually delaying your manifestation. Hmm. And so keep your eyes on the truth. And that manifestation will come a lot quicker. But you know what? There's always a time between seed, time, and harvest. And so you don't have to wait to receive your healing, but there's a time for it to fully manifest sometimes from amen to there it is. Right. And that can be difficult sometimes, yeah. you know. But I love what you just said. You don't focus on, like, it's almost like you're clicking your fingers and you're yeah. waiting for this magic trick, you know. Yeah. You're focusing on, you're, you're so busy looking at what, the results are yeah. that you forget, you know, sometimes people are searching for the healing rather than the healer. Amen. You know, my husband says that all the time. Yeah. Like, the first time he told me that, I was like, oh, that is so true, you know. And we need to be a good farmer. See, a farmer puts a seed in the ground, but he doesn't immediately, if it does not popped up in the next 15 minutes, dig up the seed. Right. To examine, is there something wrong with the seed? Is there something wrong with the, no, keep it in the ground. It says night and day, he sleeps and he rises, he sleeps and yeah. rises, and it pops up first the blade, then the, then the ear and the full corn in the ear. And so again, there's a time lapse. And so that's just with anything manifesting in this natural realm. Mm. And so again, so keep, so a farmer's not out there constantly looking at the soil and getting frustrated. He realizes there's a time. And so he goes about doing what he's with life and it takes care of it. It brings forth of itself. Yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah. really, really good. Um, okay, Samaya on YouTube is asking, in Psalms 26, 2, David told the Lord to prove him, try him, and test his heart and mind to see if it's of him. Can we, in the same way, ask God to test us in order to examine the strength of our faith? You know, it's not going to be parazo. God's not going to test you with trials and bad things and sickness and calamity. That's from the devil always. But is this good to say, Lord, I'm asking you to bless me. I'm asking you to bless me and that's test me with that, with that blessing. So when you get blessed, is that going to turn you away from the Lord or is that going to actually stay faithful to the Lord? You know, some people are faithful to the Lord when they're going through troubles, but when the answer comes and they're blessed, they oftentimes don't go to church anymore. Mm. You know, they go to church and they're believing for a spouse, but when the spouse comes, all of a sudden they're enjoying their spouse and they're off in the weekends, they're off with their boat and off with, or prosperity comes. They're no longer in church anymore. They're not being faithful to God anymore. And so God will bless you with the good things of life, opportunities, an open door will open up to you. How faithful will you be in that? Because that door will unlock a greater door. And so, yeah, Lord, I, I'm asking you to test my heart with blessing me with an opportunity. Give me an opportunity and, and see what I do with it because I believe you want me to do more than ever mm, before. That's really good. You know, one of the things we learned like very early on in Karis is that you draw that fine line. The devil is bad and God is good. And the devil comes to they don't steal, change. They don't change jobs. Yep. Yeah, right. Yep. And um, I hear so often people you know, oh, God is testing me with this and it's bad stuff. And mm -mm. this lesson has really helped. I love the two. I've never looked at the translations before, yeah. uh, even though I understood God is good, devil's bad, but that has really blessed me this morning. So yeah, um, yeah I'm looking forward to- Judo. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Ashley on YouTube is asking, my friend and I were just questioning the book of Job. Um, was God bound by his word to allow Satan access to Job? If so, how did he allow access to his possessions but deny Satan access to his health? Yeah, you look at Job, I think sometimes we, we focus on Job's trial, but realize Job got healed in the end. He got blessed in the mm. end. And so we got to realize that Job never had a covenant with God. And so that was, that was way before the law, way before Abraham even. And so nowhere does it say Job had a covenant with God. Why did God bless Job? Because he was blessed in the beginning. Why was God so good to Job? Because God's good. It wasn't because Job was good. And Job got to thinking, God's blessing me because I'm good. Mm. 
Mm. No, God was blessing Job because he's good. Right. And so, uh, so in that, he didn't have a covenant with God and he thought God was doing this. The enemy, look at it, Satan did it. And so again, he, he had no covenant with God to stand on. And so, but you have a covenant with God. So stop trying to go back and convert yourself back to Job because you have a covenant, you're in Christ Jesus. And so he's given you the victory. He's given you victory over Satan. He's under your feet. So if you want to send a message to the devil, write it on your shoe, underneath your shoe, because that's where he is. Mm. And so the enemy, and so you can stand against him with the promises of God in your covenant and resist the devil and he will flee from you. And so again, you're not a modern day Job. You're in a, different, a totally different time period. You're in the new covenant and you have a covenant. That's called new covenant. You're in a covenant with God. And so again, but God was still good to Job. He brought him through and blessed him twice as much. And we forget about that part. Right. And so and God's a good God. He apologized. To but, but really with the whole focus of Job was he got into self-righteousness. Yeah. He thought he deserved God because he goes, I don't understand why I'm going through this. And three friends showed up. Boy, I hope you don't have three friends like that. <laughs> and they were actually preachers. Right. Job was a preacher. These three men were preachers. And they all had the same doctrine. They had the same teaching, the same mm. uh, understanding, doctrinal understanding is if you do good, you get good. You do bad, you get bad. You, get, you reap what you sow. And that's their doctrine. That's their understanding. And so when Job wasn't getting good things, they said, well, you must have slept around on your wife. You must have stolen something. You must have done bad. And he says, I didn't do any of those mm. things. I don't know why I'm getting these bad things. And then finally, at the end of Job, God gets, Job gets so mad at God, he puts a fist up in God's hands and says, I'm righteous and you're not. I don't deserve anything I'm getting. So he thought he deserved the good and he didn't deserve the bad. And his whole back is self-righteousness. And so when God showed up one day, he says, okay, I'm going to show up. And he showed up in a whirlwind and asked him a thousand questions. And Job came up with a string of zeros. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then Job said this after he saw God. You know what? I heard you with the hearing of my ear, but now I see you with my eyes and compared to you with me, I'm but worm. I'm but dust and ashes. I don't deserve anything. And God said, bingo, because mm. I'm good. I'm good to you because I'm good, not because you deserve it. And God blessed him out of grace twice as much as he ever got before. Yeah, that's awesome. Amen. Yes, very, very good. Um, okay, uh, Evie on YouTube is asking, who are the sons of God in Genesis 6-2? Are they angels? I personally <laughs> believe that they're angels. And so uh, if some say they were the sons of Seth and from the godly line of Seth, but I don't see how a natural line of humans uh, would cause giants to happen. And so I do believe that they were angelic beings that came in unto the women and the giants were born. But you know what? The, there's a lot of arguments back and forth. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't get into an argument over that. So. Okay. That's awesome. Um, okay. Melanie on YouTube is asking, in Hebrews 12, it says how our father disciplines his children. So will our so our father will discipline, our father in heaven will discipline us, sorry. Um, this is not him putting us in poor health, etc., to test us, but what does this actually mean? That's a great question. So it does say in the King James it says God chastens us, and I think other translations say discipline us. But that Greek word is paideia. Paideia means child training, child training. And so God, how does God discipline his children? Does he send sickness? Does he send calamities? Does he break your leg? No, 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 no. How does God discipline his children? Well, we find out in 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is given by God, by inspiration of God, and is profitable for training. That's the Greek word for profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, instruction. And so really that Greek word paideia is used in this verse. And so God, how does God correct his children? Through his word, mm. through the word of God. Now, if you don't listen to God's word and you don't get corrected by his word, then circumstances will end up spanking you. You ever had circumstances spanking you, the oh, bad consequences yes. of your actions? It's not God doing yep. it. It's your own consequence because you're not listening to God's word. So that's very important that you get into the word of God. Stay go, going to church. And so that's, God's gonna bring, keep you in the right path and bring correction and help you in the, in the right path, but he does it by his word. That's awesome, yes. Um, okay, Denise on YouTube is asking, 
how do you keep your faith alive while waiting for that promise to come to pass despite all the negative external stimuli you see in the natural? Now you kind of covered. Yeah, I mean, if you focus on the natural, you're going to get mm -hmm. discouraged. Keep focusing and really rejoice in the Lord. And so he's the true source of joy. He's the giver of the gift. So often we want the gift, but we give, we, we stop, uh, stop our loving relationship with the gift giver. Mm. And so fall in love with God, worship him and praise him and thank him and just be so caught up with him when the good thing comes says, you know what, that's great, I don't need it because I need, only need you. It's good to have that, but really all I need is you. That's awesome. Um, this has been Amazing. You're such a good teacher. You oh, really are. I, you. I may tell you that a million times, but I mean it every single time thank I tell you. you. Um, we're kind of run out of time this morning, but there was two questions that came in. One from Adora and the other one from Brooke. The, your questions are kind of detailed. I want to encourage you to please call our prayer line. Um, I don't think you're able to answer these in a timely manner mm. um, right now. But you two, please uh, call our prayer line 719-635-1111 and explain your question to them. I know they will be able to help you and pray with you. Um, so I wanted to let you know we, we did get your questions and I apologize there's not enough time because they're quite uh, an, an intense question. Um, but thank you for joining us today. Thank you again, uh, oh, Pastor Rick. It's great being here. Uh, yes, tomorrow is Tuesday, so a live Bible study will be at 6 p.m. Until then, have a wonderful day. God bless you. God bless. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 